Hello Captain, I am Munshi Abdulhai, ATR Ground Instructor. Welcome to my online web series of ATR 72600 Ground Class on Electrical Systems Part 3. In my last class, we discussed DC power systems. Distribution, control and protection of DC supply and sources are discussed. If you missed that please check my YouTube channel for uploaded video of ATR 72600 Electrical Systems Part 2 or follow the link as shown here. Now I am going to discuss normal operation of electrical DC system, when 1. Aircraft on ground and on battery 2. Aircraft on ground and on GPU 3. Aircraft on ground and on hotel mode or DC generator 1 fault 4. Aircraft with both generators operating Here, as you see in the schematic When, aircraft is on ground and battery toggle switch is put on Main battery will be connected to DC hot main bat bus, and hot main bat bus will supply to essential bus, and DC standby bus, also to the inverter one, and AC standby bus will be fed from inverter one. Emergency battery will supply to hot emergency bat bus, through hot emergency bat bus, emergency bus will be supplied. DC ground handling bus, will be supplied by hot main bat bus, whether battery toggle switch is on or off. Provided, main passenger door is open, or cargo door control panel is open, or a refueling panel if open. When aircraft on ground and on GPU, if, a veil light is glowing on overhead panel but switch is not on, ground handling bus will be supplied by GPU through service bus directly. But, if the external power switch is selected on, BTC will be cut in and both main buses. DC bus 1 and DC bus 2, will be supplied. Through these main buses, all relevant buses will be supplied and in this condition, ground handling bus will be supplied by DC bus 1 through DC service bus, and DC standby bus will be supplied by Han emergency bat bus. Normally as shown here, inverter 1 will supply AC bus 1 and AC standby bus but inverter 2 will supply AC bus 2 only. When, aircraft on ground with one engine running or, on hotel mode, if the ground source is disconnected then BTC will be cut in and both main buses, DC bus 1 and DC bus 2, will be supplied by operating generator and, through these main buses, all relevant buses will be supplied. Note, if ground source supply switch is kept on, aircraft will be powered by GPU only and if any generator is running in this condition generator fault light will glow because GPU is always having upper hand. And if both generators are running, BTC will be cut out, and, both generators will supply their respective DC buses, provided ground source is disconnected. On ground the ground handling bus is supplied by DC bus 1 through the DC service bus, and will be disconnected when airborne. When both the DC generators lost, aircraft will be in emergency. Whether aircraft is on TRU or on battery, difference is that if, aircraft is on battery IMC will be limited to 30 minutes. If aircraft is on TRU in flight and load is limited to 60 amps you can complete the sector without any time limitation. In case of dual DC generator loss in flight and aircraft is on TRU, the TRU will get input from ACW bus 2 and it will provide DC supply to DC essential bus, DC emergency bus. DC standby bus, and AC standby bus through inverter 1. Note, in this condition DC main buses, DC bus 1 and DC bus 2, will not be supplied. When both DC generators fail in flight and TRU is not coming online, aircraft will be on battery, and amber arrow light will glow on overhead panel. In this condition IMC will be limited for 30 minutes only. Provided battery toggle switch is placed on override position and both the batteries are fully charged. In this condition, DC standby bus load, will be supplied by main battery, and when DC standby bus voltage, drops to 19.5 volts, under voltage lights will glow on overhead panel. Now pilots required to push in, second override switch. By doing so, DC standby bus load will be shifted to emergency battery. Now, hot emergency bat bus will supply inverter 1, through which AC standby bus will be supplied. 
For example if both generators are failed, there is no requirement of generator control unit and once main buses, DC bus 1 and DC bus 2, are not supplied, there is no requirement of BTC control, if you don't put battery toggle switch to override position, unnecessary battery will be exhausted and battery may not run for even 30 minutes when aircraft is on battery. Note, second override should not be used before approach, because now only source of power is emergency battery, which should be preserved to get landing facilities during approaching landing phase. At the last I want to clarify one common doubt which is being asked by so many pilots that is, if the aircraft is on TRU in flight, is it required to put battery toggle switched to override position? Before answering this question I want to tell you that when you put battery toggle switch to override position generator protection and control circuit will be bypassed, so that unnecessary power consumption can be avoided in emergency condition. And when, on TRU. If battery toggle switch is not put on override position, TRU may be overloaded and if so, TRU may be failed after some time. Thank you Captain. This part is the description of nominal and emergency operation of DC power system. If you like my class, share and subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for getting notification for my next class on normal and emergency operation of electrical system. Thank you and see you soon.